the thoughts, views, and opinions are that of my own. I'm not a salesman. I cannot be bought. This is all entertainment. Peace, peace, peace. Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. This is your host, EQ, and welcome to The Cypher. This is episode number 23 of The Cypher. The name of the episode is Meet the House featuring Studio Set. Y'all already know what time it is. Don't forget to hit the like button. It helps the channel grow. We coming straight out of Prince George's County, Maryland. Pretty girl county. So we're going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to be trying to bring more fragrance houses into the fold. Indie houses, artisan houses, houses that you don't speak of. Try to talk to more perfumers. So not only can we not meet these houses, but we can be educated on them. Let's go. How y'all feeling today? It is Sunday. Hope y'all smell amazing. Don't forget to put your center days in the chat. Let's go. I see you, Killmatic. I see Jared in the chat. Appreciate you being here. Right now, we got 26 people. We're going to go ahead and start the show. Peace, 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 and more peace. This is your host, EQ. Again, welcome to the Cypher coming out of Prince George's County, Maryland. So, I'm going to be doing new seasons, new episodes. I'm going to try to do it on Sundays. It'll be like Sample Sunday. Um, when we start exploring houses, when we get to know different houses, when we get to know different perfumers, I'm going to try to educate some of y'all because the reality is most fragrance reviewers, myself included, we don't know a damn thing. <laughs> we think we know. We think we know what we're smelling. No, no, i tell you, you don't. <laughs> You're smelling a whole bunch of accords. Most people have never smelt the raw ingredients by themselves. So how do you know what you're smelling? You're smelling the cords. I think it's oud. <laughs> nah, it's probably some molecule, some synthetic molecule you never heard of. But we're going to be educated on it because I'm like, if I can bring y'all the educational aspect to the channel, as well as talking about fragrances and as well as interpretation, um, I think it just helps you be a better fragrance collector. You kind of know what you're smelling. You know what you like. You start liking different things. It's important, right? Education is always a good thing. So here we go. Episode number 23. We're going to bring a guest on. I want to see a warm round of applause for Candace of Studio Sense. Let's get that round of applause, people. Peace. Hello, how, E. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Trying to get my right, my angles together. Okay, we're going to get it together. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. I want you to educate ourselves, um, educate the crowd and the audience to get the one, know who you are, okay. know how you got started, know about fragrance notes. We're going to get into it all and try to keep it under an hour. Um, we're here to learn and we're here to listen. Okay. And we're here to respect the process. So with that being said, tell us a little bit about the company and how that started. Okay, first of all, you have to know that I have been working in creative fields my entire adult life. I have been an entrepreneur my entire adult life. My job is a corporate floral designer. Basically, I provide floral design, floral arrangements for all types of companies. I have companies like J.P. Morgan Chase and McKinsey Consulting as clients. I have destination management producers as clients, and I provide floral design for them, as well as consulting on just overall event design. So that's my day job, so to speak. Um, as far as how the company got started, oh, I also used to be a dessert chef. I did that for many years. So that, that's part of my, my creative expression. Um, I've always loved fragrance. 
I started my fragrance journey back in the 80s when I was a teenager, dating myself here, but that's okay. And Studio Scent got started when I was looking for a high-end candle to basically add to my um, collection as a floral designer. I noticed that there were floral designers that had these candles in their repertoire. And I wanted to do the same thing. And I sort of got on the road to hiring people, didn't like what I was encountering. So I decided to do it myself. And I started making my own candles and that was fine, but I wasn't getting that perfume quality that I wanted. And then it dawned on me I need to learn how to make proper perfume. So I scrapped that and I started making candles just, you know, a little bit. But then I decided once I went all in in the perfume, then that's when the intensive study of raw materials and ingredients and learning how to basically do this started. I am totally self-taught. I have never taken any classes. I did not go to a French perfume school. I've never sought mentorship from any perfumers. Everything I know from this point, and the house was established in 2011, and I've been studying and learning ever since, and I will always be a learner. And that's the beauty of this art is that we continue to learn. So pretty much it started with wanting a candle and then it's ended with creating what I believe is a very lovely collection. Outstanding inspiration. You wanted your, and I, I find it to be a lot. You want your own thing and then somebody doesn't give you what you want and you say, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> Right. That's typically how a lot of businesses or um, creators start. I mean, exactly. it's it's kind of why I started reviewing fragrances. I was watching certain, I was watching the people who inspired me, but then I started watching other people and I was like, they're really not giving me what I need. So I might as well just do it myself and give people what I need. That's, exactly. that's good. So what's typically done is you go to a private label company, mm. but the funds weren't available for that. And I really like to do my own thing and figure things out for myself. And I figured I could do it. So I just did it. Okay. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, people, what we're going to do, we're going to get into the fragrances. Um, once we get into each fragrance, this is for the most part a blind smell for me. Two of them, um, I had a quick smell, but I immediately just, I wanted this to like experience the fragrance with you all firsthand. So it's somewhat of a blind um, two of these are not as blind as the other three because you have five fragrances in the house, correct? Yes. That's okay, correct. so we're going to go ahead and get into the fragrances. And after that, we're going to talk about stuff like raw materials, how to start a brand. Um, what is some of the determining factors in price with starting a brand? Um, what goes into making a fragrance? Um, is performance is something that's important? And then we will have a question and answer. If y'all have any questions, please save it for the end so I can read those out, especially if you're somebody who's inspired or want to start your own brand. So with that being said, which one should we start with first? Let's start with the very first fragrance that I have ever created, and that is Le Demi Mon. And this mm. fragrance was started or created in 2012. And we're gonna start with this fragrance because I know, E, you are not a fan of Jasmine. Mm. Neither am I. Okay. But Jasmine is a very, very important fragrance material. Um, many, many of the great perfumes have Jasmine in them. And this is, I call this a Neo Vintage Jasmine Floral. It is my homage to the vintage fragrances of the past because I'm a big vintage fragrance fan. And Le Demi Mont means half world. And 
it basically the Demi Mon were hedonistic people in 19th century Europe and they did everything that the bourgeois classes did not do heavy drinking lots of sex lots of experimentation all that great stuff and this is what I would imagine a lot of them would wear. Mm. And also, it's my homage to the demi monde of the United States. I'm gonna put this. In, I'm gonna put the name of it so people know what we're talking about. Um, continue. I didn't mean to cut you off. I apologize. Okay. No problem. It is my homage to the Roaring Twenties the Harlem Renaissance and it's just it's it's a lovely fragrance lots of what I call grass wall florals which are rose jasmine tuberose um, a bit of orange blossom a lot of citrus or a bit of let's just say it's a bit of citrus because it's not a citrus perfume and the citrus bean bergamot and it has sort of faintly soapy notes, which comes from using aldehydic material and aldehydes were used a lot in vintage perfumery. And the dry down is very animalic to sort of evoke a little bit of sexiness. Okay, bit. so this is what I'm getting. Okay. This definitely gives a vintage vibe to me. Um, okay. I start thinking of fragrances like uh, Guerlain's Heritage. Ah. I, I start thinking of fragrances like that where you get, it's almost, I, I'm trying to think the class, I almost want to say cheaper. I feel like you get bergamot up top. I feel mm -hmm. like there's some earthiness somewhere in there, maybe some oak mosses in here. Um, a little bit of labdanum, sister's labdanum. I feel like I'm getting this ambery note, but I'm getting a lot of florals in there. I do get the jasmine. The jasmine is... Um, it's not as indolic. It's more fleshy um, to me, not necessarily creamy. It's definitely a vintage. So if you like fragrances, people who are watching, like to me, like a heritage, uh, I think like Florist 89, just an old school traditional where you would have, um, I'm trying to think of some of the florals, like Rose in the Heart, Jasmine. Um, 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 I can't think of some of the, it's another red rose. I can't, I can't think of the name of it. It's not a rose. It's a flower. It's a red flower. I can't think of the name of it, but I feel like I'm getting some, some brightness up top, but I do get the animalics. I feel like I'm getting some earthiness. Is that coming from oak moss, maybe labdanum, an ambery kind of accord, maybe a leather accord you're working with here? No. Okay. Well, um, civet. Civet. Uh, now, because you're an artisan house, is this pure civet or is no. this a civet accord? Okay. No, 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 no. We do not use animal ingredients. This is a synthetic civet, mm. which um, if you've ever smelled civet, mm. it's, it's interesting. Some people say it's foul and it, it, it does have a very fecal kind of smell but just a little bit transforms mm. the fragrance. And that's why it was used way back when. Most fragrances now are not using civet. Mm. Civet is pure civet oil. It's very difficult to acquire and you have to torture the animal to get it. And none of us are about that. What? So we don't need to use pure civet. Mm. But to me, and maybe because I kind of associate it with it, um, it's almost... I find civet to be used in some old school leather accords because leather is an accord, right? Um, and I find that to make the leather yeah. really like almost birchy, almost animalic leather. Yes. Um, it's kind it of what, what I'm getting. And you will get that effect when you add civet to fragrances. Yeah. Now, this is old school. You have to be a vintage. For somebody who likes this, not going to be for everybody. No. It's just not. This is for people who love vintage. This particular fragrance for somebody who loves a vintage style of fragrance. Again, think of fragrances like Girl on Heritage. Um, would you consider this, what class? Would you consider this um, cheaper class or what class of fragrance would you consider this? I wouldn't consider it a, not a classic cheaper, no. Okay. I, 
I don't know where I would categorize this. It is a floral. Mm. You, do get, you do get florals. I, I would call it a vintage floral. I call it neo. Mm. Very vintage. What notes are in here? Do I do get the bergamot up top? I do get that. Um, well, I do get the jasmine. If we're talking about notes, I would say floral notes, mm. um, citrus, mm. uh, soap, which mm. comes from the, the aldehydes yeah. ingredients, and um, animalic notes. Mm. Now, in my world, notes and ingredients are not the same, and we can talk about that later. Okay. Okay. Um, I felt like there's a little bit of carnation in here. It's carnation. <laughs> That's interesting. I feel like I get a little bit of carnation in here. Maybe that's just me. That, Maybe that was... too. There's a bit of spiciness. Mm. This is due us spiciness, and that's due to a, um, a chemical called eugenol. Mm. Um, I'm not going to divulge the competition. The comp composition. Understood. Understood. But it's very interesting, and this is what I love about perfumery and what I want to achieve is I am interested in what you smell mm. not whether or not you can just repeat the notes back to me verbatim i want to know what you smell because smell is individual mm. and our experiences are highly personalized and individual so if you smell carnation that's lovely yes i, I i'm really almost wish i always say it that Fragranica, um, which I don't know if you're familiar with the website, is a place where they put notes. Uh, there's a couple okay. of different websites they put notes. And I feel like um, it's, it, it, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. I think yes. it's created false sense of what people are smelling. I think it's also yeah. have people where you can cheat. You really don't know. You can see reviews and people are just reading off notes. They're not really telling you what does what it smell? Else? Like. Right. What what is carnation? Some floral, a little spicy. I'm getting something slightly green. I'm getting some woodiness in there. Slightly leather. I'm getting the jasmine. I'm getting the florals. I'm getting the citrus up top. Um, a note yeah. list is supposed to give you a general idea of what the perfume smells like. Now, the industry has kind of led people to believe that, oh, that's what's in it. But it's mm. not. It's not. Okay, where are we going to go to next? I'm going to blow up the screen right. for you. Let's go to uh, Cardoon Gray. Sea Gray, as I call it. This is my favorite. This is my take on a fougere perfume. I call it a mossy aromatic musk. It was inspired by a, a perfume that came out, I believe, in 1965 by the House of Dana. I believe it was the House of Dana called British Sterling. And I got the idea to do this when I was smelling various types of oak mosses. I was smelling natural, absolute, um, synthetics. And this was a fragrance that I remember my father having, though he never wore fragrances, but I do remember the bottle in his sock drawer. And when I was smelling the oak moss samples, it took me back. So I love this fragrance. This was my second fragrance. This was um, created in 2015. Mm. And it's just a very easy, elegant fragrance for people who generally don't wear fragrances can wear this. It's kind of familiar, but it has the earthiness, which comes from vetiver. Mm. It's very grassy and rooty. It has a little bit of citrus from lime. There's an accord that I created, and it's a fantasy accord. It's called, it's a cardoon accord. And what cardoons are, are artichokes, which are thistles. Mm. And cardoons are very lovely, um, thick, fleshy stems that are grayish green, sage green, and feathery. You can eat them too. They're really good deep fried. Um, but I just saw that and got the, the inspiration to create an accord, call it Cardoon Gray, because I, I love the way the plant looks. And from there, the composition got started. And it has 
quite a bit of herbaceous musk, a vegetal musk, which is what the cardoon accord is. It's a vegetal musk mm. accord. And it wells very it wears very well. Both men and women can wear it. Like I said, this is a fragrance of the entire collection that I reach for all the time. Though I wear it at a lower concentration than what I sell it at. That's just my preference. Mm. But it is I'm so proud of this one. It's so great. so I do get the herbaceousness of it. Um mm -hmm. Maybe um, a little bit of almost like clary sage. Now I do get the it's dominated to me by 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 grassiness. Um, clary I get sage. A, say it again. Clary sage, huh? Yes, that's what I'm picking up. Is there? Is it in there? You're not gonna say. I, I never. All right. Well, anyway, I feel like I'm getting some of that. Um, okay. it, it's definitely dominated by green earthiness. So I can see the kind of like vetiver, just kind of grassy and earthy rooted, slightly soil. But there's a brightness in it. And and you That's say it lime, and I wouldn't have never guessed lime. I knew it wasn't a lemon, but I've been really obsessed with lime fragrances lately because I think it adds a almost tartness but a freshness something about lime that's fresher that i that i personally find it fresher than lemon i yes. find it lemon fresher than grapefruit yes yes and there's there's a freshness to it i wouldn't have guessed that it was lime but i knew there would have been a citrus that that is up top there's also a citron mm. which is more perfumey a little close to um bergamot mm. So it's a combination. Of this that. is one for people who listen. This is one again. It has a sort of old school feel. So for all those vintage fragrance people, this isn't. This isn't going to be somebody twenty years old, in my opinion. I don't, don't think. think so. I don't think they're going to. Eh, no, because all right. When I look at some people, or people watch these videos. Um, there's different groups of fragrance. I think connoisseurs and buyers. Um. I think a good portion, at least what I find on YouTube, um, are people who literally watch a video and they want something that is going to smell good when they walk out the house and they want compliments. They desire um, compliments. <laughs> yeah. They desire yeah. to each yeah. his own, to each his yeah. own. Everybody has their own thing, to each his own. And I think if you're 20 and you're dealing with 20-year-old 20, 20 women, I don't think they're going to be able to process this. I think you'll smell like their father in them. That's just mm -hmm. me. That's my interpretation. I think this is more of a 30 of a of a mature kind of sense scent smell. Um, I think you know, you start talking 30, 35 and up. I think this can be dressed up. Spring, this will smell good. I've often told people who are watching um my videos that environment matters on how you wear a fragrance. I think it helps accentuate a fragrance. When you start thinking about spring and waking up in the morning and start smelling the morning dew, and you start smelling the fresh cut grass and, and the florals are starting to bloom and everything's turning green. I think when you wear something like this, it'll work. When you start thinking of fragrances like Guerlain's Vetiver, um, fragrances like uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to do my mental Rolodex for people because people want associations when they hear stuff like that. Okay. Um, but this is one I would definitely want to put on skin and I might just do that. I want to put the because I have somewhere to go and I don't want to lie. But this is one I think will smell a lot better on skin than on paper. In my opinion, I think different things will come out. But there's a freshness to it. There's a mystique to it that makes you keep wanting to smell it and i like it more not that any of them bad i like it more than the first one it's more wearable to me but that's no, just that's just, just what i personally like yes 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 um some people say it leans masculine i would say so and and this is why now we can go into conversation on masculine and feminine um always use a litmus test that i think if you spray something in the air and you walk out of a room and you come back in what do you envision? And a lot of that is based on scent memory. It's based oh, yeah. on scent memory. And I think something like this, if I smelt this in the air, I would immediately think a man was in the room. I would think a businessman was in the room. I think somebody, you can wear this casually or dressed up. You can wear yeah. this out and that about. There's a, the, the lime is, to me, the lime is what really makes this. The lime really, 
just makes it not super dirty to me. Super dirty. It, it adds a brightness to it. You know, yes. adds a brightness to it. And I like that. This is one I think I'm going to circle the block and want to put on skin and see how that works on skin. But I'm going to set that to the side. Again, is this something that's for people watching that's going to be mass appealing? Um, No, I don't think it's going to be a mass appealing fragrance. Um, But again, that's something I want to, I personally want to put on skin. I have a, a wide palette. I uh, like I have girl on vetiver and vetiver extreme in in earthy oak moss fragrances, which is why I also love fragrances like Hasavat. But again, I don't this isn't going to I don't everybody's not going to be down with this based on my audience and kind of what they're into, like a very, very mass appealing fragrances. But okay. I think but I think it's way more wearable, in my opinion, in my taste than the first one. That's nope. just my opinion on it. Um, well, the, this is the hallmark of what artisan niche fragrance is. Mm. We're not mass appealing, basically. Mm. We are, I won't say we're specialized, but if you want something really different, you'll find it in the artisan niche space. And we can go into that later. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's what do we have next? We have V-Swap. Okay. This next one. And this one is a Sheepra, but it's a Sheepra for a hot second. It's classic Sheepra notes, oak moss, bergamot, labdanum, patchouli. When you first smell it, if you catch it, but then it blends and melds into a very fragrant violet. And within there, there's a little bit of raw almond and then it bottoms out to the suede and I detect some slightly, ever so slightly creamy banana, banana nuances. Not, every, not everybody gets a banana. This is not a tropical fragrance. This is not a banana fragrance, but I get it. And it was very dominant when I tested it. And so I just thought, mm, let's list it as a note. But it is- okay. Ooh, I like this. You do? Okay. Oh, I like this. This. I think you would like it. Oh, uh, I mean, so far, it's my favorite. Really? Oh, yeah. It, 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 I do get that banana, but I think it's more jackfruit. <laughs> it's almost more jackfruit to me than banana. But there's, a there's, a, the jackfruit. <laughs> there, there, there's a fizzy, um, almost like a carbonation, a spiciness. Really? Um, up okay. top, I'm getting something. It's it's almost fizzy. I'm getting citrus and I'm getting fizz. Like it's right. just it's it's a pop. It's just a pop to it. No, yeah. I like this. Um, yeah, this is my favorite so far. No, no hesitation. Oh yeah. Now Ooh. this is so fascinating to me. But I now I've been on sheep. I've been on my sheep. So the last. It's two things I've really been on. So when I first came into the game, at least heavy, I was into like gourmands and stuff of that nature, like really into like gourmands. I don't yes. think I've worn in the last probably three years, two and a half. I haven't really worn a gourmand fragrance. I've been really heavy on ouds. I've been wearing mm -hmm. my ouds like crazy in traditional masculine fragrances. One of that is a sheeper fragrance. Mm -hmm. I've been on my sheepers because I think you can wear those anywhere, any season, any time. To and me, the aura is so wide. There are so many sheepras. Mm. Classic sheepra is mm. oak moss, labdanum, Ooh, like this. Um, bergamot, patchouli. Those are classic sheepra ingredients. Mm. You take those four ingredients and you can add gourmands to them. You can add oud to them. You can do anything. Mm. This has a old school feel with a modern twist to me. I, I can't wait to put this on skin. This is going on skin. The first one, uh, Jasmine, I got to be committed to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to wear that another time. Um, I have to be committed to that. Um, the oak moss, I'm definitely the second one. I'm definitely curious, but this one has really drawn me in. I'm gonna be honest. This, do you ooh, get it's the very violet? Fresh. I do not. I do not. I pers I don't get the when I smell violet, I, it becomes a little powdery to me. Um, depending on, I, but my experience with violet 
keep in mind, I don't have a lot of experience with a lot of raw ingredients. Okay. I smell it based okay. on different fragrances I have. Um, now, there's sometimes... violet and then mm. there's violet leaf. Mm. Violets themselves are almost always an accord because you can't extract oil from actual violets. Now, the violet leaf is something that's extracted and that's mm. used a lot in perfumery. Mm. And a lot of people haven't smelled violet leaf because it's just not one of those things that you smell a lot. This is this is fresh. It's woody, slightly floral. Um, this has to go on skin. So I said I was going to do that near the end, but no, I'm going to put this on skin now. This has to go on skin because it. I'm I'm captivated, and skin is the determining factor for most things. Correct. So it can be. But I that that opening is like citrus, jackfruit, banana is, but not tropical, but fresh in. Oh, different on skin. Okay. Here's the thing. Hold your wrist a bit farther and move your hand. You need the air. Perfume needs the air to come alive mm. and smell the air coming mm. from you. Okay. Okay. I do get, I do understand what you're saying. Like the fresh ripe banana, like right before you put it in a smoothie. Where it's almost soft, mushy almost. Okay. I'm not getting a violet, but That's I'm getting it. some woodiness. Yeah. Citric. Mm. It, I don't know if you said, because you read off some notes. Is there a little bit of cedar in this? Mm, no. Not to my knowledge. No. I like this is mysterious. Um a lot yeah. of people like it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when people hear artisan, a lot of things doesn't come off is <sighs> when they hear the name of things, it their interpretation of what it is. That's why we'll get into it. Um okay. When people hear different and not mass appealing and they hear artisan, the first thing FRAGCOM, because our level of knowledge goes into um, non-wearable or or only a few people wear them or no one will like the smell of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be scary for a lot of people. The word artisan can be scary for a lot of people, especially when you're used to going to a Macy's and getting a fragrance from there. To go into there is scary. To me, this is safe. This is it. It ha, it doesn't smell like anything I've smelt, so I can't compare it to anything besides it being the class of a sheep or fragrance, um, which that's is a, a good thing. Go, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. That, that's a that's a high compliment. I take that as a very high compliment. This is this is wearable. So where would I wear this? Because this is my favorite. I got to talk about this. so far. Um, this is something this is signature scent worthy for me. So I'm I'm talking to the audience right now because they're they're going to know you it's a signature really? I will wear signature scent without a doubt. Signature scent. It I can see any season, anywhere, work safe, night, daytime. I will wear this in hot weather, I will wear this in cool weather. Most cheapers I find to be signature scent though, so that's not something that I find to be a far fetched reach but there's an elegance to it where if i was going to a, a wedding in mm -hmm. the yes in the spring it's kind of cozy sometimes there's a warmth to it there's a there's a warmth to it it's kind of um, cozy kind of snuggly smells good on cashmere too i tested mm -hmm. it on cashmere i like this a lot wow a lot. So happy. Um, this this is because I don't have anything in my collection that smells like it. So let's start there. That's important for me. Okay. Um, wearability for me is important for me, and my taste is wide. So wearability is kind of like that's to each his own, right? Right. Um, 
Oh, I like that. <laughs> this, 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 this is this is good. I would love to see how this transitions. And I didn't wear anything today, so most of the time when I do my intros, I do pay, I call it pay the bills, which is basically I talk about my center today. Um, this may be my center today, um, because I want to spray this all over, and I want to go through the rest of my day and just experience this. Um, this is lovely. If you are now age age range is important. Is again, this is opinion based. Take my opinions with a grain of salt. I think 30, 30. Um, but I but I also think that 28 mature. What kind of field are you on? You 28 and you work corporate? I think you can wear this to corporate. Now, how is this going to perform, project longevity? I can't tell you that. I, I can't tell you that now on first smell. But the way it's coming off skin. And that banana note has disappeared. I don't get it. I don't get it anymore. I just get this freshness. And there's a spicy. I'm getting something very spicy. I don't know what it is. It's... I don't want to say it's ginger, but it's it's a very spiciness. Musk, is there musk in here? I've been in my musk kick. I feel like there's a, a, a nice, a <laughs> nice clean musk. Um. Oh man. Okay, we're gonna move on because I'm, okay. I'm 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 gonna say this. Yes. I love this fragrance that we're talking about now that is a love for me without a doubt love yes absolutely smells like nothing before that it that is a love for me so <clears throat> I, I call it a fragrance for all humanity it is anybody can wear this anybody can wear it and it smells beautiful on everybody i really think it if spraying in the air for those who watch me i think it definitely leans masculine like if i smell this I think it like, doesn't mean it won't listen. Now let me tell you. Now here's again. This is my interpretation of masculine exactly. and feminine. And, and when I say really, I mean this is all just really interesting. Yes. Um. Um. A man and a woman can wear whatever they want. I have fragrances yeah. that I believe lean like way feminine that I like to wear. Right. Um. But to me, it. I would. I have to smell it on a woman. I can't tell you, but it, it, but just in the air. If I'm just smelling in the air, I would. My scent memory would say man. Okay. My scent memory would just say man. Okay. Oh, this is gorgeous. We, we got to move on because I don't. <laughs> I don't want to top time. That that is that is. Stuck on that. Okay. It's gorgeous, sophisticated, charming. Um, there's a mystique to it. I can't stop smelling myself. Um. And you're never going to, there is nothing I can compare it to. Not even say it's, it's almost a modern take on vintage style perfumery. No, no, bravo, bravo. Let's move on. Let's move on. Where, let's where are we on. going next? Where are we're we going, going next? To, we're going to buy a dare. Okay. Buy a dare is my tribute to cultural dance. I'm a dance aficionado. I studied ballet for a while um, when I was young didn't pursue it professionally, but I still love it. And I love all forms of dance. And Bayadere means temple dancer in French. And there is a ballet called La Bayadere that this was um, inspired by. And maybe another time I'll get more into that story. But that's what this fragrance is. It's in, <clears throat> excuse me, it's an extra de parfum the strongest perfume oil concentration in the collection. And I'm not going to say it's a rose oud fragrance. Some people have said it. Some people say, yeah, I don't really get it. But there is auger wood, which is an oud, um, in, in the ingredients list. So you're the aficionado when it comes to oud E. So you tell me what you smell. All right, give me a second um, as you keep talking because I'm going to also show, because this is one where you did send me a free um, bottle of this. So let me put it back on screen. I gifted you. Bro. You gifted me, yes. So for those who who um, who want to see, you, it comes in a package box like this. And then the top comes off 
and he's 30 mls, I believe. 30 mls. 30 Very clean and simple. Not overdone. Just a clean look of a fragrance. But now let me go to the fragrance. This I think this this is one of the ones that I smelt and I said, "Oh, I'm I'm did you smell it on skin or did you smell it on no, the blotter? No, it was it was on the blotter. Okay. And then I said, oh, this is ambery. <laughs> I yes, said this is ambery. An it is an amber. Dark. Bit, yeah. Amber, this is an amber dominant fragrance. And you gotta like ambers. Um, and I'm talking about when I start thinking about my favorite ambers like Ombre Perso, where they also have they're slightly animalic. Um mm -hmm. Like like an ambergris in there, like a little bit of amber ambergris kind of combination. Ooh, floral rose, rose. Yes, centifolia rose. Mm. Which, if you look at a lot of ambers, when I think about ambers like uh mitza, um, when I think of like Dior's mitza, when I think about ambers like ombre premier, um. I don't know if Ombre Perso has rose in it. It might. But if you look at a lot of Amber's people, um, they tend to have a rose in there or a floral in those Amber's. So this to me is like a traditional Amber, but it has some woodiness. I the feel wood like I'm getting something slightly leather. I feel like I'm getting a leather aspect a to this Amber. A lot of people have gotten a leathery aspect to it. And I think it might be Ooh. a combination of woods and the auger wood. That's ooh, there. Ooh, ooh. Okay, I'm an amber head. So I'm I am an amber. You love I'm an amber, amber head. I mean, name an amber, uh, some of the best. I own them. Ombre, I own Mitsa. I own um, you know, then you have these patchouli fragrances that also have amber. And amber is ooh. the best perfume genre. Oh. It really is. Mm. It used to be called Oriental. We don't use that phrase yes. anymore, mm. um, which is fine. But this is Ombre Perso for those who don't know. It, that one, I'm not I'm not familiar with that one. That is, I think, it came originally released in 1988. The first Amber, I think, that was actually released ever. Um, so I call this, this is my grill Amber. This is the Amber that all Ambers like. That's just like when I look in a dictionary, what an amber fragrance is, that is my grail. Everything else goes above or below it. Um, okay. Ooh, just all right. So how would I describe who is this for? This is for anybody who loves amber. You have to love amber. Let's start there. But it's not a vanilla amber, but there's something very resinous. A smokiness to it, almost as if some myrrh. Maybe some myrrh was in here, or maybe it's frankincense. But I feel like there's an incense quality that's at play with the amber in here. There's a bit of there's a bit of green spice, mm. which might be giving you those resinous. Do you have cloven? Is cloven right. here? No. Hmm. Geranium. <laughs> I, feel like, I love this. I love it. I, 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 what a I, good nose. I feel like geranium. It, it's it's and, and so the reason why so when I find rose and geranium to be together, and geranium has a spiciness to it, and it's green. Oftentimes, so ask you this, have you uh, ever smelled rose geranium? I have um some raw materials, but I don't think it's rose geranium. I don't know. So because no, the answer geranium smells different from the regular Pelagorium. I think it's called Pelagorium geranium. Mm. A little different. Yes, the greenness is coming from geranium. This is. This, I love ambers. To me, this. Is, if you like ambers, you're going to be into this. It's definitely a must try. It's floral, spicy. Slightly green, leathery, very resinous is how I would describe this. Warm, very warm. To me, fall and winter 
or a cool night. Mm -hmm. But for me, I love my ambers in fall and winter. I think fall as the leaves and everything starts to go brown and dry out, I think this will definitely shine in it. I find that uh, the rose centifolio, it's it's a bright citrus that kind of lingers in this. That adds a little bit of brightness. The roses do tend to have mm. citrus notes to them. No, this is this is a stunning amber. I mean, traditional stunning amber. Longevity, I don't know. Performance, I don't know. Um, I would hate to put that on skin because it's hot and it's muggy out here. So I'm going to wear the Thank other you. one as my center of the day. But one day when I'm in the house or I'll circle the block on this, this is, if you love ambers, I mean, like you really love ambers. One, if you love ambers and you don't have this, I don't know why you don't. It is the standard. <laughs> it's the gold standard for ambers. So let's start there. That's the gold, gold standard for ambers because it was the first amber ever created in 1988. There are no ambers that preceded, at least on the books, on the records. I don't know any of them. This is up there with that style of amber. This is a traditional amber, um, very resinous. I don't really... In, incense, a little bit of smoke. No, this is gorgeous. This is a gorgeous amber. Gorgeous amber. With, without a doubt, gorgeous amber. You Thank have you. to be a fan of amber, though. You you have to. It, it, is, it is no other way to say it. So, let's move on, and then I will Let's circle the block the and the dry down. Say it again. Let's move on to the last one. Yes. It's called Fiselis. This is so far the best selling fragrance. Everybody loves this fragrance. Um, this is an amber. This is your a classic amber, spicy. Spicy. I call it an aldehydic amber gourmand fragrance. Um Lots of that amber fullness, a bit of spicy orange notes, bit of caramel, and vanilla. Interesting thing about this fragrance, I, need, I thought I was going to launch in 2018, so I needed another fragrance. And I just put some stuff together. And I put it aside, forgot about it, and pulled it out. And it started doing very interesting things. So it turned out I wasn't going to launch. So I decided, okay, well, let's, let's build upon this. One of the interesting facets of this perfume is that though you do get spiciness and you get citrus, which is orange, orange peel, to be um, specific, there are no citrus or spice molecules added to this fragrance. And this kind of, kind of goes into why I say notes are not ingredients. What has happened is the ingredients that I did put together basically got together and <laughs> created these particular notes. And we can, we can talk more about that. That may even be another conversation at another time. But people love this fragrance. It's, it's sweet, a little sweet for my taste. I'm not a gourmand oh. fragrance person. Oh. Okay. I, I do get the caramel nuance that you say in, in the mm -hmm. spice. It's, it's spicy, but I wouldn't consider it... <laughs> I wouldn't consider it a gourmand, though. I would consider it an amber fragrance. Okay. Um, it's not, it's I do not get the freshness. Like a lot of gourmands are. Yeah, yeah. I don't, like, I don't smell this and think food. I get a freshness in it where, <laughs> so, so I do get that orange peel. So people, what do I mean by that? Um, you ever had an orange and you break into it in this burst of juice kind of flies out and zest. it's in the air, the zest. That's what I get. And you smell it on your hands. Yes. That's yeah. 
and it's kind of waxy has a bit of a waxiness but a bit of a zing too that's mm. the kind of orange that you get here it's not like orange <sighs> juice or any kind of orange flavored dessert it's more of the peel so i'm gonna put this <laughs> you're gonna put this on skin uh, I, I, something <laughs> about that on, i i Listen, I love ambers. Both of these are different styles of ambers in their own right. Um, against my better judgment, uh, all right, I, I can't. I'm. I want to put it but, on your other arm. Don't put the, it on. The same. No, well, I'm not. But the thing is, I also don't want anything interfering in, um, in in the other fragrance. I really don't want. Uh, that 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 experience, I'm in love with that fragrance right now. Um, I love my ambers. So these two okay. that you gifted, these two that you sent, are, are ambers through and through, resinous, warm, fall, winter, spice, winter, fall, winter. I think brown. When when I if I close my eyes and I smell it, I'm thinking something brown. It's almost brown. The color of the juice is almost brown. There's a spice to it, a warm spice like cinnamon. It gives almost a cinnamon feel to it. So I, I I pick up star anise. Mm, I can see that too. A bit of, you know, Yeah. star anise. No star anise oil. I don't use spice, mm. oil. spice This is oil. very spice. This is almost. Hold on. Let me smell the other one. Oh, this is almost Middle Eastern, is I would almost say. It gives me a Middle Eastern feel. I've been on that kick too. Middle wow. Eastern style of, of ambers. Um, I find the Middle Eastern um style of fragrance, at least the ones that I have experience with and those that I wore, um, they they have a rich amber to them. Oh, but, yes. it's, but it's the way it's the way it plays with the spice. The way it plays with the spice. Um, because you have the silks where you have the spice market. So I'm exactly. getting I'm getting some of that. A very warm spice. I don't necessarily get something bright or something like cardamom. I don't personally get that. I get a warm spice. Like you said, I, I'm getting somewhat of it's almost cinnamon. I interpret it as cinnamon, but I mm -hmm. can also see how star anise that could be it. Yes. Yes. Um th that citric is toning down. Um, it does. It does tone. It, yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, down. it doesn't last very long. I find this amber to be very balmy, almost balsamic. Um, yes. Not necessarily Peru balsam, but I find this to be um, more more rich vanillic, almost mm -hmm. than than um, where the other one is more. Like incense amber. I find this to be more vanilla, like a rich vanilla. Yes. It's a very yes. rich vanilla. That's how I would describe this. No, right. this is, this is beautiful. Kind of like when you take a, a fresh vanilla bean and you split it open. Yes. And you smell the seeds that come out and the oils that come out. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. Yes. So both of these, so I'm going to tell y'all now, and I'm, Again, I haven't worn these. I can't tell you. But those two ambers, the last two we just discussed, smell very rich, very dense. They smell like they will, they're going to last on skin for a long time. Will they be room fillers? Are they like pushing off in the air? Um, I don't believe so, but I believe they're going to long lasting. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't think longevity no. is going to be a problem with any of those two. They just, they smell way too rich. I've smelled fragrances, you know, that are rich like this. Yeah. These aren't, Ooh. well, how do you say beast mode? They're not beast yeah, mode. No. Well. They're not, they're not going to enter yeah. the room before you do. No. But, I, but check this out. Let's paint the picture. This is autumn. Yes. You're a gentleman. You have a turtleneck on with a scarf, maybe a wool pea coat. You sprayed it on your skin. You have the subtle breeze that is mixing in with the fallen leaves in the cool air. Just going by, somebody catching a waff of this, 
it's going to, you have brown shoes on, black jeans. You know, you got your Chelsea boots or something on. This is that kind of vibe to me. This is this is just going to flow through the air. It's going to be extremely intriguing. And it's going to draw somebody in. Uh, yes, it's not. This is one as you pass people, they'll catch a waff of it. And because it's extremely vanillic, which vanilla is aphrodisiac, will make people be like, ooh. I, that's what I get from this, which is why I love Ambers anyway, because I find that that's what Ambers do for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. And the, the, these are amazing. We're going to let these dry down. Okay. And let's get into some. Let me see where we are. We're almost an hour into it. So we're going to get into a couple of questions. Okay. Um, and now let me go to. Um, let me go to the comments. But I have my own questions. But let me pull the comments up so I can see them. Okay. Interesting so, questions. I should. Um. Not. Not yet. We. I want. I have my own questions, and then I'm going to ask questions for anybody in here. Again, we have 112 people in the chat. Please hit oh, the wow. like button. Oh. Please, please hit the like button for those who are new to the chat. Um, please hit the like button. It's free and it costs you nothing. Raw materials. For somebody who, well, let's let me back it up. For somebody who's watching this and they want to start their own brand, what are some of the necessary, what are some of the steps one should take when because I know it's expensive. It has to be costly. It's not cheap. I was gonna say you need Go money. So I'm gonna I'm gonna blow up the screen and let you talk. Talk to the people. Money. You need money. People want to say passion. Passion is nice. Passion is that uh, that's the affair that lasts for a short time. What to do perfume creation? You need to be committed. Commitment is ride or die. You have to be all in. Um, it helps if you are a creative person and you work in a creative field because you already have that mind, you already have that discipline, and you have to be just a little bit crazy to do this, but it's not for everyone. Everyone can't do this work. It takes an enormous amount of patience. It's, oh my goodness. It takes time. Perfume takes a lot of time. And you're not going to see perfect results the first time. Or the second time. Or the fifth time. Or the tenth time. For example, Bayadere took me 30 or 40 tries before I thought it was right. And I love it. Most creative people, we love to go all in and and spend a lot of time doing things. So aside from patience, commitment, and money, you also have to spend a lot of time smelling things. Your nose has to be on all the time and not just for perfumery. You start learning notes by smelling your life. If you cook, smell the things you're cooking. If you drink, smell your wine, smell your whiskey, smell your cocktails. If you garden, smell the earth, smell the flowers. It's all, olfaction is all about smelling and assigning a memory to it. And that's what people who go to perfume school, that's what they do. They don't start blending materials out the gate. They spend a year or two just smelling different materials and assigning a memory to it and they're tested on it. And so you really have to know your ingredients. And I mean, I'm always evaluating ingredients at different levels of concentration and dilution so I can get an idea of what they are and what I think they can do when I blend them with other ingredients. And you have also have to have a sense of wonder and a curiosity. So those are some of the things that you need. But I would also say you do need some money because this doing it like this mm. will take all your money. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think that's 
I see a lot of comments, um, and I will just want to answer a few. Um, what Amber sent, will I put on my skin first? Um, both of the Ambers are amazing. Um, but I think uh, for Salas, because of that zest opening, did I say that right? For Salas. Um, because of that orange zest, I'm very um, curious. In that slightly caramel, vanillic, almost gourmand warmth, I definitely want to see that on skin. Now, when will I put it on skin? I'm going to be honest. So for me personally, and I'm going to get back to our stuff, I almost want to wait till the fall because there's this thing with my mind and my head. When, I, when I'm in summer zone, I smell some of these winter scents and they just don't hit the way they're supposed to hit. <laughs> but soon as winter comes and I smell them, they smell far superior than they smell in the... That's just how my mind works. I can't. That's the power of suggestion. It, 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 it's it's been like that for a long time. Um, so I try not to judge fragrances too harsh when I think they're traditionally out of season. Now, fragrance has no season. Wear what you want to wear, but I think some things pair well with environments. Yes. You can drink a red wine with white pasta, but white wine goes better with it and chicken and shrimp. White wine goes better. You can eat white wine with a steak, but whiskey, red wine goes better with it. Do what you want to do. Drink what you want to drink. But yes. things pair for certain reasons and pair for certain things for a reason. But do what you want to do. Or, Again, or mood. Or yes, mood. moods. Absolutely. What am I trying to convey? I think about that when I'm wearing a fragrance. What am I trying to convey? But um, so I want to answer that question. Stressful. Yes, people. Anytime you're a creator, even doing what we do now, and I don't even upload content all the time just because I don't feel like dealing with the stress of it all. Um, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of time editing, recording. My time is precious. I got things. My schedule is booked. All I don't have free time. People be like, hey, let's have free time. It's booked. If it ain't trying to figure out what I'm going to do for content for you all. I have kids. I'm a father. I have to be, you know, I want to be a lover. But I have things to do. I'm trying to find ways to make more money. I have things to do. <laughs> Vacations I want to go on. Yeah. Free time, I want to go to the gym. So all of that takes time. So when you put time into something, um, that within itself is the most expensive commodity because you can never get it back. You can never get it back. You have to recognize that too. You're going to spend a lot of time. You have to be meticulous. You have to write down and record everything that you do if you mm. want to recreate it. And so very de I'm detail-oriented by nature. That's my business. That's what I'm paid to do. So it's very easy for me to make very com complex notes and write them down and, and do that. If you're not detail oriented, if you just wanna rush through stuff, you can't really do this work and produce a good product. There's so, no shortcuts. No There's shortcuts. no shortcuts to perfection. There are no shortcuts. There are people who are doing shortcuts and that's another conversation, but to make a good product, because I don't like mediocrity and I don't want to add to that, which mm. is why I took as long as I did. I only launched this line quietly last year mm. because I've been so busy. I've only recently just started to promote it. But it took me a long time to learn to make proper perfume. And when you're doing it on your own, there are no guides to say, this is how you do it. No. It was a lot of mining the internet, looking at books, reading old books, reading research papers, learning about aromatherapy, learning about plants. A lot. Me being so a florist has an, it has an advantage because I know plants and flowers very, very well. I've been doing this for 20 years. But still, it was a lot of work. And again, I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um. For people, raw materials, how does one or are there any sites if you can say I don't I don't know um where people who, lots who, of sites and yeah. if you have to basically you have to do your own work, you mm. have to find them, they're easy to find. Anybody can buy the raw materials, but again, before you go down that rabbit hole and you'd be surprised how fast you can spend a thousand dollars on raw materials in a short mm. period of time, again. Learn by smelling natural ingredients, mm. you know, 
You can go to a nursery and smell herbs. You know, pick pick the leaves and crush them and smell your smell your hands and record what you smell. All ingredients, all things have notes. And notes are just descriptors of smells. Mm. So the things that people think are notes, they have notes. Mm. Smells. And that that's all they are. Outstanding. Outstanding. When you start to create each fragrance, or is there a certain inspiration, inspiration for each fragrance? Like you be like, like if you say, Oh, I'm gonna work on a new fragrance, what inspires you to work on your, your sixth fragrance? Or sometimes, sometimes it's the ingredients themselves. Sometimes, I mean, inspiration comes from anywhere. It could be a song, it could be a memory, it could be a feeling, it could be a textile, it could be a color, it could be anything. And this is why creative people make really good perfumers is that we are absorbing our world all the time. And we can look at, like right now, I'm looking at some drapes that are gray and I'm already getting some ideas as to how I could recreate that in fragrance form. Mm. it's inspiration comes from anywhere. I mean, okay. I don't do a lot of stories because right. I'm interested in the stories that people create or have when they're wearing my fragrances. I mm. want to hear about what's going on in your life when you're wearing the fragrance, whether than some blah, blah, blah that I can make up. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, let me see. When when creating a fragrance, because this is something that I see a lot on in in fragrance groups and communities, especially as as things progress with inflation and everything else. How does price determine? How do you determine price? Because I believe, uh, what thirty mLs are for your fragrance about what one forty ish is. I think this um, one would be like one forty five. Uh, let's see. Bayadere is one forty nine. Phasalis is one twenty five. Cardin Grey and Viswa are both 95. And Le Demi Mont is uh, 125. Let's see. You don't have to be right. Le Demi Mont I... is one, 145. Uh, Phasalis is 125. Um, okay, so I, I put the link um, and I pinned it up top for anybody who wants to for the shop or for the website. So look through the comments, look at the top if you want to go to the website. I pinned that in the comments. And the but yes, set is only $39. And the discovery set, which is what all five came in, comes in a, a pack like this and comes in the top, and all of them set inside of it. So as I always say, people sample, 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 Do sample. Not blind buy, no blind and, buy, and see what works for you. Um, but I'm sorry. Let's get back to the question. Um, price. How does how is price you, determined? You know, you have to really. And here's where being in business helps. Having a business sense helps. You got to study the market, and you have to charge what you think the market will bear. Um. You price it too low, then people are going to go, mm, what's wrong here? If it's too high and nobody knows you, then it's like, this person is, you know, charging more than a Tom Ford fragrance. And I don't know who they are. Why would I spend that? That's a tricky point. And mm. you've got to find that sweet spot, but you also have to, decide who your customer is and study their buying habits. And that's another thing, you know, with having a brand, you really have to study your customer base, decide who they are and take a look at them. And I, I learned a lot about who my customer were on Instagram, basically. And talking to people, I would hang out and department stores and boutiques and listen to people's conversations and ask them questions sometimes about fragrances. I did a lot of field work and I still do. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, 
knowing your base, that's with any anything you're selling. You have to know your Anything. customer. You have to know who your you customer. have to know who your customer is, and and that that goes into even what we do is reviewing. Who is my customer? So when y'all want to know why we get a lot of top tens, is because the customer demands it. <laughs> so yeah. you, I like to get away from the lists and talk yeah. more about the fragrances themselves, but. Lists are popular. List, list people want a lot and they want it short and they want it fast. And, and you, you know, I'm a little stubborn, which is why my channel isn't growing, but I know I'm dope <laughs> and it's cool. But um, the, the list is you can't be, you have to adapt in any business. Yes. Um, it's no, or you'll be, or you'll be the new pa newspaper industry who is not going to the web. <laughs> and not selling ads. And that's why the newspaper industry went down. Um, yes. so let me see. Moving. Uh let me see. Um, if there's let me open up the questions. If there are any questions, I want to see if there are any questions. Now's the time to put y'all questions in the chat. Um I just went on the website getting the discovery set ASAP. So somebody saying a few people saying they're buying discovery sets right now as we speak. Somebody yeah. said somebody said we crashed the website. <laughs> um, <What? laughs> they said they said the website crashed. I don't know how true that is. Um, listen, people, if y'all have any questions, I'm gonna get to the we're gonna get to the dry down of what I think for the fragrances because now we're an hour into it and I want to see kind of if any of them change. But before we do that, if y'all have any questions, ask them now so we can. Get your questions answered, whether you want to start a brand or you have questions about anything. Um, are there any designer inspirations? Um, I think she pretty much answered that, but I don't want to speak for her. I think she says inspirations come from anything, but um, I'll allow her to answer it. She's the question. I, Go ahead. Here's my thing about designer fragrances. I am a big fan of the designer fragrances of the past up until I want to say maybe very early 90s. The stuff that's out now, the reformulations, I really don't care for. But my purpose is to make my fragrances based on my skill and what I know about perfumery. I have no desire to try to recreate anything or clone anything. I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of skill and I like to think I have pretty good taste too. So mm. I have a lot to offer. And right now I'm just building the house. There's another collection coming. And I just want to say we are not a vintage inspired house. I am inspired by the vintage fragrances because I love them. But the next collection is going to be quite different. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's going to be mass appealing. I don't like that word, but there will be something for everyone. And that is what Studio Scent is about. Let me let me um, answer a few questions because I see they're starting to roll in. Um, are they um, your Maybe, favorite perfumers, if you have any? Do you have any I favorite? Do. Okay. I do. I love Geza Schoen's work Ooh. of Eccentric Molecules, um, Jean Claude Elna. A master perfumer. Mm. Um, who else? Um, Isabel Doyen, who was, she might still be designing for Annick Boutot. Um, Josephine Carapano, who worked a lot with Estee Lauder back in the day. And um, there's another one, I can't remember, but those are my favorite perfumers. Outstanding. Right. Outstanding. Um, we have another question. I just caught the live late. You may have answered what cologne perfumes inspired you the most. Um, let's uh, you kind of answer that, but let me ask this in a different way. And what, let me say this. What was, oh, anybody, go ahead. If anybody has a question for me, you can always hit me up in Instagram, studio send SF, send me a DM and let's talk. Yeah. What um what was I see this question? I think um I'm going to ask it in a different way that still might answer his question. Um, what were some of your favorite perfumes before you started? Like, what did you, what did you like wearing that made you say, oh yeah, I want now, I want to do this. Oh, well, when I wore a lot of perfume, 
I was not, I didn't even know that I could make my own fragrances, but I, uh, there's so many perfumes out there. There's just so many. I mean, they're, they're, right that's now, why I tell people to sample. <laughs> and, and yeah. And right now I am just, I'm more interested in people who are in the artisan niche space. Mm. So I'll tell you right now who I find, who I like right now, who's in the same space as I am. Mm -hmm. I love um, Bruno Fazolari's fragrances. Mm. I love uh, fragrances by a woman named Miss Layla of Fume Fragrances. Mm. I love um, Mason Haney's fragrances of Mizu Brand. Mm. And uh, I also love Alexander Balahudis' fragrances, Strange Invisible Perfumes. Right now, I am totally concerned with the artisan space because I feel we are going to change perfumery because we have, we have no shackles. We have no roadblocks. We have total freedom. We can do whatever we want. And we are doing it. Okay, um, another question, um, and then we're going to get to the dry down. Um, I'll probably ask two more, and we might okay. circle the block. But um, any industri um, industry roadblocks in perfumery? Have you ran across any roadblocks so far? No, no, because I didn't go the traditional route. Mm. I am a perfumer, just like all the masters who have perfumery traditions in France. I just came in through a different door. In mm. fact, I didn't come in through the door. I came in through the roof. Mm. So there's no roadblocks when you are doing, when you're doing it this way. Now, if you go to perfume school, you got to play the game. I'm not going to play the game. Yeah. Are you trying to, I guess some of the things that might be asked to build on that question, as far as like getting into um, um, shops, or or stuff of that nature how does that work or just just a, a route you don't plan on really getting into as far as like big box not necessarily a nordstrom or Saks, but like some of these um maybe niche stores and stuff any roadblocks as far as getting into that or is that something you haven't really looked at i haven't gotten into that yet because like i said we're really just getting going and we're not ready for wholesale just yet because that's another level of business and but that is definitely the goal there are lots of wonderful niche boutiques in the country i would love to see more and for those of you who may want to want to create perfume but not sure about it maybe you ought to open up a boutique because we could use another um lucky scent or um ministry of scent that's here or zen garden oasis that's here and you know we need more place, smaller places for representation. But it's definitely the plan to be in smaller boutiques. And I just got to make time for that and get set up for that. But right now, we're online. And that's a lot to manage in and of itself. Understood. But Understood. Get, a, f a few more questions. I think I can answer this one by somebody asked about any boozy fragrances coming. I think we covered um, her inspiration <laughs> and, and she also has a new line coming out soon, but I'll allow her to answer that. So let me put that on the screen. Any boozy fragrances coming soon? Maybe. Maybe. So that. Maybe. Yeah. So take that for what it is. Stand by and pay attention to what's coming next. Um, when that next line, when is that line projected to maybe start being released or is that just something in the works? It's in the works right now. I'm doing um, some of the, the final modifications, hopefully by the end of the year, maybe before. Okay. All right. And it also a home fragrance line in the works as well, because we're a fragrance company. We're not just a perfume company. Mm. We plan to create interior and home fragrances as well. Okay. Um, somebody asked about a warm weather fragrance. 
um, the first three I talked about when you go back and look at the line, um, I think would fit well. The last two, the Ambers, I believe those are like fall and winter. They scream fall and winter to me. But with all things, get yourself a sample. In warm weather. You say it again? Sea gray. Cardin gray. You could wear that. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I was like the first three that, that was discussed. Um um, but with all things, get a sample and see what works best for you. There are really no rules in wearing. I just know how I like to um, wear fragrance and pair fragrance. But by all means, go back and look at the whole. I know you said you just came on. Look at the whole um, review and make your judgment based on that. But a discovery set would help you out in that. So while we're doing that, let's let's go to the dry down. Let me go to the dry down um, and see which one this was. So we go with the first one. And I don't want to butcher the names. Um, Le Demi Mon. Le Demi Mon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, this change. They all change. Oh, okay. This they is, all... this is. Oh. Now, now it's not as vintage as it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's like I a whole, it's, it's like a whole new fragrance. I, I didn't expect that. Part of me was expecting like, eh, I mean, you got to be like in a vintage feel, which I have some vintage fragrances um, or style of fragrances, like old school, like Floris uh, 1989. I mean, Floris yeah, 89, yeah. Floris yeah. 89, which I have yeah. here. Um, those fla fragrances that got to clary say, I mean, like those traditional fragrances. Um, but this is, oh. I'll Everything needs to go on skin, but this is completely changed. It's not as vintage as it started off with. When it first started off, it gave an old school feel of a fragrance. And it's not that. It's unisex to me because of the floral heart that I'm still getting. I'm still getting that floral heart. The bergamot is still here. Mm -hmm. Still, it's still it's juicier almost. Oh, this is that needs to go on skin. <laughs> this scared me a little bit. It 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 was if I had to rank them, I have mm -hmm. to rank them. This was probably in my estimate, based on the first impressions, would have been my least favorite. Um, but it it's now completely changed. I don't even I'm getting a, the jasmine isn't there as much, and maybe that's it. I'm I'm personally on paper not picking that up as much. Okay. There's a citric note. It's still woody, but it's still kind of mature. I would still say th I don't I don't think if you're 18, you're wearing this and trying to you know 18 the way 18 year old boys think because most of my audience are men. Um, I don't I don't see an 18 year old boy wearing that. Yes, yes. So so I, I would I would definitely say 30. 30. I think 30 you 30 can plus 30. you can 30 plus you can you can pull that off. That is yeah, that is elegant. I would Thank just you. some of the words that come to mind is elegant, intriguing. Oh man. Ooh, okay. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna have to circle the block. I thought I was, <laughs> I was, I was like, eh, I ain't gonna really. Everything ain't everybody's cup of tea, but in all first impressions, I was like, that's just not gonna work for me. Um, mm -hmm. but that's changed. Okay. All right. The second one, which is carbon, carbon gray, Car Cardone. Gray. What, car what is it again? Carbone. Cardoon. Cardoon. Cardoon Gray. Still earthy. There's <laughs> all right. I, I I like the earthiness of it. I like the grassy mm -hmm. green. I'm into like I like Gerlon's veteran. Mm -hmm. Not that I, and this doesn't smell like that, but I like earthy in the right environment. You can wear this and and it'll definitely work. Okay. As I wear it in a lighter concentration, and with the lighter concentration, it's more citrus. Well, so that's what I'm getting now. 
So what I'm getting now is the morning dew, spring yeah. morning dew, the, the the water. There's a wateriness to it, and it's probably from the citrus. It's almost coming off like like wet dew off the grass in the fresh air. You know what? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I know what this is. All right, you know what is, what the air smells like after it rains? Petrichor. After it rains, that's what I'm getting. After it rains, like you get that storm that just comes through and now the rainbow is starting to come through and that air, that fresh air that you get. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm getting with that. This is another one I would love to put on skin. Is this mass appealing or for everybody? Um. <laughs> I think mass it's very wearable. 30 and up. I think it's wearable. Mass appealing, but I think everyone and anyone could wear this. I like that. I like that. For my taste, I like it. But you have to like earthy fragrances. Everybody doesn't ain't into like oak moss and vetiver. If, if you're not into that, this is not going to work for you. I'm just being honest. But, but it's I, also I'm into that. Well blended too. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You're All not, of them. You're not going to just smell. The earthiness, you're going to smell a nice amalgamation of different things. Almost mineral. There, it's almost a mineral feel to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that. Again, I, that needs to go on skin. So on those, skin. Th those are, those are, okay, my mind's changed. I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> earthiness, but it's changed again. I want, and this is going to be my center of the day. And this is um, pronunciation again. Viswa. Viswa. Okay. It's, a, it's a, let me tell you about the name quickly. It mm -hmm. is um, violet, and swa is suede in French. So it's just a mashup of words: violet, suede, viswa. It it is. Is probably my favorite. You still like that? Uh, like, like is an understatement. Like is, <laughs> I just sprayed it all over my arms, so it's fresh. So it's just all in the air now. This is fun. This is fun. This is unique. Okay. This this is unique, but yet extremely wearable. Again, I know I'm in these groups. The name artisan freaks people out. This one completely wearable. I don't think there's no hiccups. That's why I like this one. There's no hiccups with it. Like with um with Cardoon Gray, you have to like or you have to like you have to if you're having aversion to oak moss or vetiver, then is you you you're, you're, you're probably you. Yeah, you're it's, it's not going to be for you. It's not going to be for you. Um the first one is I'm like I ain't like the opening. I like it like it now. <laughs> um and the ambers and the amber. Um, I mean, but this one to me has no hiccups for me. I, I can't find it. I think anybody can it's freshness, there's a spice to it, it's woody, it's clean, it's refined, well blended. No one note sticks out. It's just a conglomerate of accords and experiences. I like that word experiences. It, it, it is it is it is just an experience. Nothing sticks out to me. You you know, like some free sometimes fragrances, you'd be like, I'm getting more of this and more of that. This is just it's just it's constantly um like water. It's flow ever it's flowing. Fluid. It's, fluid. it's very fluid. Fluid. It's, it's a fluid, fluid experience. Um, but that's gonna be my center today. That is lovely. Thank you. I Thank that's you. a flawless composition from beginning to end. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't like the other ones. It's like okay, well, the dry down, the opening was kind of no, this is flawless for me from beginning to end. Oh no, that's this. All right, I'm done talking about that. I need a bottle. I need a bottle with that. I need a bottle with that. Um. So and then um. Buy a dare. Buy a dare. Buy a dare. Okay. What I think the ooh the the woodiness the the 
the nuance of the oud is coming in more where I'm getting that leathery, woody, slightly smoky, ambery aspect of it. The florals have died down. Yeah, yes. Very resinous. Hey, this is almost like I say, um, it's very traditional resinous amber is what it is. But in its own right. I, it, yeah. The florals is what makes it. And I can almost see how your experience with florals in the industry that you worked in makes that what it is. Because the way it's used in here is different than the way I get my roses and florals in other amber fragrances. Stunning. If you like ambers, the next two are going to be for you. And let's go to Fasalis before we end this live. Mm, almost powdery. Like sometimes it's powdery. It's, it's powdery. The, the powderiness of amber. But, but so it's, amb not, it's not an old school vintage kind of powdery. No. But amber can almost go powdery on certain people, on certain oh, skin. Yeah. And, and, and I, I can I have never met an amber that did not go powdery. But powdery now, is a good thing. Powdery is, is, is a good thing. I think it just go when you think powdery, don't think, oh, it's gonna smell like baby. Think cleanness, a powder. cleanness. I'm sorry, what was you saying? I cut you off. Don't don't, th don't think Johnson's baby powder. Mm. Okay. It's all right, so my final thoughts. My final yeah. thoughts on the house. Well blended. I can smell the artistry in it. No note stands outside of the ambers. Ambers, I'm just getting amber. But I'm getting other things with it. Even the fragrances, and I'm going to be honest, and this is me being honest. Um, Le Demi Moon, that one wasn't my favorite in the opening. I need to put this on skin another day. Because yeah. I want to see what it does in the opening. But I have to be in the mood to wear fragrances like Heritage. And, and yeah. well, I can do it. I do it. I own them. But I have to be in the mood for that. Um, but the way this is dried down, it's... I like it. <laughs> I like it. it it's <laughs> changed. My mind has changed from that. I was out. So if you get a sample set, let it, let it do what it do. It changes. Um, but overall, the house is well done, well blended. It's wearable art. It's wow. how I would say. Some art isn't wearable. I smelt the fragrance from a house I'm not going to say. If you've seen my reviews, some people may pick it up. But there was a fragrance that they released from the house. And when I smelt it, I said it smelt like rigor mortis and death. It smelt like death. Oh. It, 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 sm <laughs> it, smelt, it, it smelt like um, a hoarder. Because I've smelt a decomposed dead body before I've smelled. I know what that smells like. So to me, that's Maybe what that was the intent that, and I'm, I'm, great, I'm that was the intent. you said what? If that's great. If, if that, that was, was the yes. Intent. But to me, and that's like you said, it's great, but that's not wearable. I don't want to exactly. wear that. You don't I don't want, want to wear it around that. smelling like a dead body. Yes. These, that's why when I create fragrances, that's the first thing I ask. Is somebody going to want to walk around smelling like this? Mm. I'm not going to do art for art's sake. Mm. I'm in business. And I know that the purpose of smelling good is to feel good. Mm. And feeling and smelling like a dead body, that's not a good thing. Yeah. But these, all of these are wearable um, to me, especially in the dry down. Originally, mm, late Damien Moon. I don't know. Wasn't I'm I'm I, I I'm open. My Jasmine and me don't get along, so I'm open with that. But to, to sum it up, um, definitely get a Discover set. And how much was the Discovery sets again? I know they can. Dollars. How much again? I'm sorry. Thirty nine dollars, and we offer free shipping on everything. Okay. No spend free. Shipping. So so free shipping. I would definitely say get you a sample, but with these fragrances, don't think you're going to walk into a store unless you like me and you smell mm, that first, that one I really like. But for the most part, don't think you're going to walk into a store like going to a Macy's or something and smell something and immediately you're just going to get it. Your experience with fragrances is going to tell you, let it do what it do. Let it, I, if, if I would not have let Dame. Let um one more Le time. Demi Mon. Let Demi Moon. If 
I, I could have easily wrote this off. To be honest, I could have wrote it off. I didn't think he would like it. From what I know about you, I didn't think he would like it. The dry down on paper, right. on paper at least. I'll, we'll inbox to, tomorrow. I might make this my center day. We'll inbox and I'll tell you what I think on, on skin because I already sprayed the other one all over my body. Um, <laughs> this, the, I'm, the, I, the, I, I like the dry down. Yes. Open it. No, 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 not for me. But allow, so now I'm curious, is like you said, how does it transport in the air? I'll be curious to see what this smells like in the air. So with that being said, people, I don't want to take up too much more time. Candace is now an honorary member of the channel. Yay! This is going to be the last that you see of her, especially as we get into the education. And there's more people I'm bringing on, more perfumers that we're going to be talking to. Um, Day three fragrances is interviews coming up with them. Shelter perfumes is coming up soon. We're going to be talking about notes. I'm bringing on people who can educate us because the reality is most reviewers don't know a goddamn thing. Pardon Ooh. my French. We Ooh. don't know. And that's it. And I'm speaking for myself. I know more than some and I can tell by watching some reviews. But even then, my knowledge is limited. So I want to bring people who's not who has more experience than me. You never want to be the smartest person in the room. Me if you have anyone out there, if you have any questions, please send me a DM and let's talk. It, it's it's out there. Is there um a statue? Hold on. Is there a statue on Lemon Tate? Um, um, uh, which question is there a statue? I just want to go through any questions. I just don't know what that means. Um, Come back to a statue of limitations as far as what? That's one of my normal viewers. He's being, that's one of my normal viewers. He's not being disrespectful. I just want to kind of make sure I answer the, um, the question. <laughs> um, but you, you have to let things, with fragrances like this, you have to let them do what they do. Give them a chance. Let them do what they do. Circle back and always put on skin. Everything's not going to be for everybody. There are very few houses that everything is for you. You know, Where? I might still... I might still put this on and still be like, it's nice, but it ain't for me. And that's okay. Don't, it's not offensive, but I like everything. Um, yeah. Lady Demi Moon. That's intriguing. Like it's not my fave, but when I smell it, I want to smell it more. That Let's makes sense. Tomorrow about it. Yeah. It, there, there's, it's almost like the mysterious girl. You'd be like, she's a little weird, but I can't stop looking at her. Because there's something with her, something in her eyes that's intriguing. And I think that's what that fragrance is doing. There's there's something very mysterious about this woman. And I don't know why. And I want to figure it out. That's what Lay Damie Moan is to me. I love that. I love that's that. what it is to me. Really? So, with, so with that being said, people, I want to thank everybody for coming through the, the site, through the website on how to order is up there. Um, for people, I enjoy y'all. We're going to educate over here in the cypher. We're going to grow. We're going to learn some things. I want to bring on new houses. I don't want to talk about Dior all day. Um, I definitely, no. <laughs> yes, I definitely want to bring people who know more than we on to the channel. I appreciate the super chats and, um, enjoy the rest of y'all Sunday folks. I'm going to leave Bye. you the way I greeted you. And that's in universal language of peace. Peace, everybody. Enjoy.